Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are talking about one of the biggest questions in the business of artificial intelligence, which is if, when, and how Apple might make their entrance into the race. We've just gotten a new report from The Information, who have become by far the most significant source of at least Silicon Valley-based AI scoops of any news publication out there. The highlight of the report is that Apple is apparently spending millions of dollars each day to train a new AI model. But what are they actually going to use it for? Who's the team that's working on it? Let's look and see what the reporting has dragged up. So a couple pieces of information in here. First, the information reports that John G. and Andrea, who is Apple's head of AI, first authorized the formation of a team to develop conversational AI, i.e. LLMs, around four years ago. The team is called Foundational Models and is led by Roaming Pang, who is an ex-Googler who worked with Gian Andrea when he oversaw Google's AI research arm. The information reports, quote, The team remains small, numbering around 16 people, but the budget for training Apple's most advanced models has grown to millions of dollars per day. Continuing, they write, the foundational models team at Apple plays a similar role to that of AI teams at companies such as Google and Facebook, where researchers produce the AI models and other groups then implement those models into the company's products. Now, in addition, the information writes, quote, there appear to be at least two other relatively new teams at Apple that develop language or image models. A recent Apple AI research paper and employee profiles on LinkedIn point to the existence of a visual intelligence team working on software that generates images, videos, or 3D scenes. This is probably not that surprising given how much emphasis Apple has on augmented and virtual reality, given that their biggest release of this year is the Apple Vision Pro. Now, another team the information writes is working on long-term research involving multimodal AI. But what is Apple actually thinking about where this technology might come to bear in their products? One use case discussed in the piece is an LLM that could interact with customers who use Apple Care. Another, which is one of the most anticipated AI features from Apple, would be a fairly complete overhaul and upgrade of Siri. The piece writes, The Siri team plans to incorporate language models to let users of the voice assistant automate complex tasks in ways they currently cannot, such as creating and sending a GIF with a simple command. The information says that this effort hadn't been previously reported. In terms of how advanced the technology is, the information writes, People on the Apple team believe its most advanced language model, Ajax GPT, has capabilities exceeding those of OpenAI's GPT 3.5. Another person with direct knowledge of the model says that Ajax GPT has been trained on more than 200 billion parameters. One issue, however, is how this would integrate with an on-premise implementation that would be more privacy-preserving. As the piece writes, Questions linger over how Apple can incorporate LLMs into its products. The company's leaders prefer running software on devices, which improves privacy and performance, as opposed to on cloud servers. But, as they point out, an LLM with more than 200 billion parameters couldn't reasonably fit on an iPhone. Still, a lot of the reporting in this piece points to G and Andrea as just super skeptical of the usefulness of chatbots powered by LLMs. Quote, while he has repeatedly expressed skepticism to colleagues about the potential usefulness of chatbots powered by language models, a person familiar with the matter said over the past year, he has come around to acknowledging the technology's ability to accomplish tasks after seeing a number of internal demonstrations. I don't know, man, it's a little hard from the outside to get a grasp on how much, to me, this muddies the question a little bit of the extent to which Apple not moving more aggressively into the AI space has to do with them having a clear picture of how they want to integrate AI into their existing products versus just kind of missing the boat on the consumer potential of LLMs. The piece also points out how much bleed there is in terms of talent between these big tech companies. They write, after he arrived at Apple in 2018, Gene Andrea helped recruit key engineers and researchers from Google. He also favored using more of Google's cloud servers, including servers imbued with Google-developed AI chips, known as tensor processing units, to train the machine learning models Apple uses to improve features in Siri and other products. The piece also points out that of the 18 people who have contributed to Axel Learn, which is Apple's internal software to train Ajax GPT, a dozen of them joined Apple within the last two years, and seven of them had previously worked at Google or Meta. Now, obviously, Apple is a really cash flush company. So even the fact that they're spending, quote, millions of dollars a day training AI doesn't necessarily mean that some new product launch is imminent. Still, whether it's LLMs or something else, it feels very likely to me that market pressure is going to get bigger and bigger on Apple to at least articulate what its vision for the AI space is, even if it's something very different than its competitors at Google and Meta. Speaking of Meta... The information also shared a piece a couple days ago called Inside Meta's AI Drama. The information once again writes, Many of the scientists and engineers who worked on Llama have quit, embittered by a previously unreported internal battle over computing resources, with another meta-research team working on a rival model that the company ultimately abandoned. 
Specifically, the information writes, more than half of the 14 authors of the original Llama research paper published in February have since left the company. Said Joelle Pinot, the head of Meta's Artificial Intelligence Research Lab, quote, retention and attraction of good talent is probably where I spend most of my time. Of the research scientists and engineers who have left, a number went and founded a startup called Mistral AI that was notable for having raised a $113 million seed round, and others have gone on to join companies like Apple. It sounds like from the story that there were multiple different divisions within the FAIR or Fundamental AI Research team based in different locations that were working on different foundation models. In May 2022, one FAIR team that was based mostly in the U.S. publicly released something called OPT-175B. A few months after that, they started working on an even larger model. At the same time, a different FAIR team based in Paris had begun working on a separate LLM that would eventually be dubbed LLAMA. The model was smaller than OPT, and as the information writes... The team believed a smaller model would be more efficient at inference, the process of generating responses to questions. And when push came to shove, the big tension was around computing resources. Quote, rivalry over access to computing power inflamed tensions between the teams. The Llama team in particular felt overlooked. They received less computing power than the North American-based OPT team, said people with direct knowledge of the situation. Now apparently, and this makes sense, questions started to grow around why they had two teams working on similar projects that both required what were ultimately pretty finite resources. By February of this year, leaders at the company had decided to start bringing together members of the competing LLM teams to focus on a single model which would become Llama 2. At that point, the OPT model was abandoned, and it sounds like part of the reason for that was that the team had just churned through personnel. Apparently around half of the 19 authors listed in a May 2022 paper about OPT have subsequently left Meta. Now you might think that given how significant and influential Llama has been this year in shaping how generative AI is developing, that some of these tensions might start to go away. However, according to the information, quote, Despite the success, tensions are still shimmering among researchers as Meta's attitude to AI research is evolving. FAIR has traditionally had a bottom-up culture led by researchers, with a mission centered on advancing breakthroughs in AI. But as Zuckerberg has become more intent on incorporating AI into Meta's apps, FAIR's focus has narrowed. It has canceled research that doesn't have a product slant, such as work on protein folding. Anyway, ultimately, just a great example of how much is going on behind the scenes at these big tech companies as they jockey to figure out where they stand and what they can do in the race to shape the artificial intelligence field. A last example of this that we'll look at today comes from Amazon. Yet another piece from the information published on August 30th was called How AWS Stumbled in AI, Giving Microsoft an Opening. The piece begins, Long before ChatGPT arrived on the scene last year, Amazon Web Services was developing artificial intelligence software akin to the technology that powers the hit chatbot from OpenAI. AWS had hoped to unveil the software then known inside the company as Bedrock at its annual customer conference late last November, but had to postpone it due to technical snags. That ended up being a fortunate decision. A couple days into the conference, OpenAI released ChatGPT, immediately wowing the tech world. AWS leaders soon realized Bedrock wasn't on the same level as OpenAI's AI software. But AWS had to do something its leaders felt. AWS was the number one provider of cloud services, while OpenAI had formed a tight relationship with AWS's biggest nemesis, Microsoft. In the following weeks, AWS chucked out its old plan and attached the Bedrock name to a new service that allows developers to connect cloud applications with a variety of LLMs. The change of plans, the information writes, details of which haven't been previously reported, illustrates how ChatGPT's sudden surge in popularity caught Amazon off guard. Now heading into the fall, a lot of the focus is turning to Google and the extreme expectations that they're pushing around their Gemini model, which based on the amount of compute alone, is being positioned as one of the first serious competitors for OpenAI's GPT-4. This battle is quite obviously going to shape all of the tools that you and I use and dictate a lot about how the industry evolves, so it is one that we will keep our eyes on closely. Will Apple actually jump more fully into this race? Only time will tell, but it certainly sounds like they're starting to spend the money that they might need to if they're going to get in the game. That is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. I appreciate you listening or watching as always. If you are getting value from this content, I would love it if you would go leave a rating or a review. It makes a big difference, and I appreciate each and every one. Until next time, peace.